welcome to part two of chemistry paper one, 2018 at Excel. Okay, so I'll get started straight away because I introduced myself in part one. Okay, so number two, salts of metals can be prepared by reacting the metal with an acid to produce the salt and hydrogen. So remember, salt isn't just what you put on uh, chips and things. A salt is um, an isn't uh, a chloride, okay, or an oxide of a metal. Okay, so salts of metals, because it's a metal and a non-metal bonded as a salt, can be prepared by reacting the metal with an acid to produce the salt and hydrogen. Okay, that's what we're told first of all. So let's look at the first question. Describe the test to show the gas is hydrogen. Okay, so you may have done this in class, so you might remember the noise of this. So you need to put, apply a lit splint. So not a blowing splint, a lit splint. So apply a lighted or lit, okay? There you are, there's two way, way, ways of writing the same thing, lit splint. Okay. A, and they which makes you laugh this bit because it's a funny word. A squeaky pop noise will be heard. Really, what that is is a small explosion. Okay, because hydrogen is very explosive. So a squeaky pop sound will be heard. So you need to write both of those things to get those two marks. That's very important here. Is those two things, apply a lighted or lit splint, okay, and a squeaky pop sound will be heard. Okay, next one. Nickel is a metal, so we saw that earlier, didn't we, about the periodic table, nickel. Explain how the structure of a nickel atom, Ni, so that's as a symbol for nickel, changes when it forms a nickel ion, N2. Plus. So let's think about that first of all. The um, nickel atom is neutral, first of all. So all atoms are neutral. So nickel atoms are neutral because they've got the same number of new sorry, same number of protons as electrons. So protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. So if they have the same numbers, overall, they have zero charge. That's the atom. Okay, let's form an ion now. So, the, so it's just Ni, that's where they've um, shown you. There's no charge on that, in the atom, but the ion's got a two plus charge on it. So protons don't usually move, okay? They don't usually lose or gain protons, you lose or gain electrons. So what has happened here is the nickel, nickel atom has lost, okay, so because it's got a positive charge, it's really it's lost its negativity because only electrons move, okay, they're much smaller than they can move. Protons very rarely move, okay, so don't think in chemical reactions, Protons don't move. Okay, it's the electrons that always move. So the nickel atom has lost two, it's got two plus electrons to form a Ni2 plus ion. Okay, so I've explained what has happened. So you actually get one mark for saying lost electrons, and another mark saying I've lost two electrons. So if you wrote that in one sentence, that's two marks. It's actually quite easy mark, but make sure you put the two electrons there, not just lost electrons, because that only gives you one mark. You get one mark for saying that, but make sure you put the number two. It shows you there anyway, two. Okay, so always read carefully, so it's about the reading carefully bit. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. A nickel sulfate solution, it's made by dissolving 23.5 grams of nickel sulfate to make 250 centimeters cubed of solution. So, so um, dissolve the water. 
is a solution. So calculate the concentration of the solution in grams per dm cubed. Okay, so um, I might do this in a different order to you, but there's more than one way of doing this. Okay, so that I would look at the units, grams per dm cubed. We've already got that in grams, so that's okay. We don't have to convert that. But this volume is in centimeters cubed. So we need to convert that to decimeters cubed. Okay, so let's convert that first. That's what I would do first, make it a bit easier. I would convert that first. Okay, so we're just going from centimeters to dm cubed. So 250 centimeters cubed divided by, so we need to divide it by one thousand okay to get decimeters okay and that would equal 0 0.25 it's okay you can do the calculator if you can't do that um yeah only because i'm used to doing things um when i was doing my dtcs i wouldn't be able to do that in my head anyway i've talked for many years so i can do these things now okay calculator is always allowed always bring one to your science exams it's not a non-calculator paper in a science exam, they're all allowed calculators. So don't worry about like um, how to work things out. That's not what's being examined here. Okay, dm cubed. So if you forget what a decimeter is, I always draw it out because sometimes I forget too. Okay, if you think about a cube, okay, drawing a cube here. Okay, there's a cube. Okay, so a decimeter is a cube. So each side is 10 centimetres. Okay, so remember cubes, they have the same all the way around. So a decimeter, so the word deci means 10, so that gives you a bit of a head start there. Deci, okay, so 10. So the volume of this cube would be 10 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000. Okay, so one decimeter cubed, so one dm cubed, this is a decimeter, is 1,000 centimeters cubed. That's the conversion. So that's why we're dividing it by 1,000. Okay, so if you forget, draw this, because sometimes I forget, and I draw it, I would have this cube, but sometimes I forget the number, 1,000, so I draw the cube out, okay? And it's the same if we get to meters cubed, that I'll draw the cube out, okay, and work out from there. So that's actually what makes you a good scientist, um, it's actually working things out. It's not knowing a lot of facts. It's being able to work it out. Okay. So actually, I've um, I've um, worked in technology as well before, and actually, what they look for when people work for jobs is how how people work things out, not what they remember. It's how they work it out because that actually helps you in lots of aspects of life. Okay. It's how you're going to work something out. Not you know the answer straight away. That's not that important because you might get a different problem. It's how you work it out. Okay, that's the important bit there. So I will always go through and I'll pay for how we work things out. Okay, so okay, then we've converted that. Nice and easy next step. Okay, so just look at the uh, units again. Grams dm cubed. So let's think about so concentration. Okay, the concentration. It is how much of something is dissolved in, so how much of something in grams is dissolved in a volume. Okay, so we've already got that in our grams, 25.5 grams divided by our volume, and we've already converted it, 0 0.25. Okay, so let's, let's look, so we've got 23.5 divided by 0 0.25. A maths trick is actually, um, it's actually quite, uh, if you divide something by 0 0.25, okay, you actually times it by four. Okay, again, don't worry too much, I'm just telling you this, but don't worry about remembering that. But a math trick is timing this by four. So if you divide by 0 0.25, it's exactly the same as dividing it by four. I'm just gonna do this on my calculator. If I'm doing everything live here for us. So it's, you can either, it's, I'll, I'll do it the way, if you try it on your calculator, will you try it? Try 
23.5 divided by 0 0.25, and then 23.5 times four, and you will get the same answer. Okay, that's an interesting thing. Okay, it's 94. Okay, grams per dm cubed. Okay, so 94 grams per dm cubed. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Part C. Okay, it's carrying on to C. Excess, so that means more than needed. Nickel carbonate is added to dilute sulfuric acid. So dilute means it's been dissolved in water in a beaker. So you've got nickel carbonate plus sulfuric acid goes to nickel sulfate plus carbon dioxide plus water. Okay, we've been told the formula, so that's um, the word formula. Nickel sulfate is formed in solution. Okay, so this is formed in solution. Describe how, so there's no working out, we're just describing. So describe how a sample of pure, dry nickel sulfate crystals can be obtained from the mixture of nickel sulfate solution and excess solid nickel carbonate in the beaker. Okay, so actually this one's a lot easier than you could be thinking. It's a, it's a technique, it's a laboratory technique, it's like how we practically do it, we're just going to write about. Okay, so it says the nickel sulfate is in solution. So it's not in the bottom of the beaker, it's in solution. So it's like in the water. Okay, so it's an example, it's like if you've got some sugar and dissolved it into water, some warm water, that would be in solution. You wouldn't have to see it. And if you pour some sand in there, it wouldn't dissolve, would it? So what you do there is you filter it. And we're going to do the same thing here. Okay. So if you think about this is excess solid. So that's example. That's like the sand left over, did sugar and sand. Okay, it's the same process. They could tell you any two solute two um two substances here, one in solution and one in solid. It would be exactly the same situation. So we, first of all, we need to filter. Okay, so filter the solution. That's what we need to do first. And that's to remove the excess solid nickel carbonate, to remove the solid nickel carbonate. Okay, filter solution to remove solid nickel carbonate. Next thing to do is heat the solution to evaporate the water. So heat the solution to evaporate the water. Okay, so, um, and then allow to cool. Let's cool down. Okay, you, you wouldn't actually, to be honest, you wouldn't have to reheat, you can you might be able to leave it, but I'm gonna heat it to speed up the process. Um, you would be allowed to just say, um, do it allow to cool, okay? Or you could dry it any way you want. So allow to cool and then leave, excess water, there'll still be some water to evaporate on the windowsill. So you might have done this with some copper sulfate and I've done it. Evaporate and allow, it's gonna take a while, a few days usually for crystals to form. That'll be our, our three marks. Okay, nice and nice and easy. Filtering would give us one mark. Um, heating solution, another mark. How to cool, give us three marks. Nice, three easy marks there. Okay. Number three, ooh, reaction series. We'll talk a little bit about that. Number three, most metals are extracted from ores found in the Earth's crust. The method used to extract a metal from its ore 
Remember an ore is a rock with enough metal in it to be economical, so worth extracting. Okay, the method used to extract a metal from its ore is linked to the reactivity of the metal. Part of the reactivity series is shown in figure two. So most reactive calcium goes to least reactive gold. Iron ore contains iron oxide. Okay. Iron is extracted from iron oxide by heating the carbon, sorry, by heating the oxide with carbon. So heat the iron oxide, that's a good uh, word formula. Iron oxide plus carbon, you heat it with carbon to make the reaction happen, to give it energy, goes to iron plus carbon dioxide. Okay, so we've, we're getting the iron out from the iron oxide. In this reaction, what's happening? So A, carbon is reduced. No, okay, because it's got something added to it. Iron oxide is neutralized. No evidence of that. Iron oxide is reduced. Okay, so that's the correct one. Iron oxide is reduced because it's gone from iron oxide, basically it's got smaller to iron. The oxygen is taken off it. The opposite of reduced is oxidized. So carbon has been oxidized. because It's been given oxygen. Whereas iron has its oxygen taken away, so iron oxide is reduced. So X in that box. Okay. The formula for iron oxide is Fe2O3. Calculate the maximum mass of iron that can be obtained from 240 tons of iron oxide. Okay, so what we need to do, so we need to, what we need to do first, so we've got relative atomic masses, oxygen 16 and iron 56. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just stop the video here because it's going to be a longer answer and I'll explain the rest of it in part three. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video there and I'll see you in part three. Thank you, see you in part three.